Hey guys, welcome back. This is episode 10, I believe. All right, episode 10 in the series on Python stock value investing. So, <clears throat> before I start, I just want to say that. Um, so I thought a lot about like you know how we can approach this because there's like billion ways to do stock investing, right? I mean, there is like you know like you, you have different models, you have different analysis, different ways to filter. But you know you can do like DCF model, you can do like you know valuation model, blah blah. It's you know what when we go down the rabbit hole, it's gonna be like really intense, and I I'm trying not to like. You know, I mean, I'm not. I don't want to call myself like a super expert or anything, but um, I think I know enough to get like get around. But I don't want to do a brain dump on you guys because, like, to do this sort of professionally, right? I mean, even I think NYU has like a master's course or something. It takes like a really long time. There's a NYU professor. I think his name his name is uh, I forgot his name. Dom Damadaran or something. I mean, you can go like super deep in, in depth and I don't want to keep it that way because you guys going to just get lost, right? So there's also, there's a Python part, there's a data analysis part and there's the investing part, right? So I don't want to kind of like make you guys like turn your brain to like mush, right? By giving you too much information. So I'm going to keep it simple. As I mentioned before in the previous episode, we're going to look for trends, right? We're going to do like basic ratios and stuff, but we're going to keep things relatively simple because... If we go down the rabbit hole, it's, I mean, it's pretty intense, right? So anyway, uh, let's get started. So the first thing you need to do is obviously fire up Jupyter Notebook. And if you haven't done so, you got to watch the previous episode on how to install Python and Jupyter Notebook, right? So anyway, so let me kind of get started. So let me get rid of this, right? Okay. Um, so the first thing we have to do is make sure that you have the package installed. So... If you haven't done so, make sure you do pip and sub plotly, right? And I already did it, so I mean, this is gonna run, but yeah, it's already installed, right? So I already installed it, and if you haven't done so, make sure you have white finance installed as well. Uh, you will need that, yeah, so it's, I already have installed it, so if you haven't done so in the previous one, uh, make sure you have these packages, because it's all gonna be about this. All right, anyway, let me get rid of this. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is Import Y Finance as YF. Okay. How do I? Okay. Oh, press Enter. Okay, yeah. Import Plotly. All right. I can't type today. Sorry, guys. Uh, import Pandas as PD. And we're going to have this line um, pd.options.plotting.backend equals Plotly. So what this is saying is that if you get data uh, through data frame and we do a lot of pl plotting, uh, use Plotly as the, ch the the charting engine. Okay, so just you know press enter. Oops, just press enter. Okay, so that, that did it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is now let's get the um, ticker right. So the way we're gonna do that is say let's let's uh, we can go back to the, I think the previous. Couple episodes we did Nvidia, right? Let's just use Microsoft because Nvidia is still growing, so they're a little bit like um, there's more nuances to their stuff. So let's just pick a boring stock that's you know that's been around for a while. So let's just pick Microsoft. Microsoft is like you know they're growing consistently. I mean they've been growing for like the past like 30 years, right? Um, they pay dividend, you know, very little, but they still pay dividend. So you can do you know models based on that. You can do like this kind of cash flow. You can do all kinds of stuff. So anyway, let's just do that. So the way we're gonna do it is by typing MSFT equals YF dot ticker, and the ticker symbol is. If you guys don't know already, if you just go to Yahoo Finance, right? I'm sure you guys already know this stuff. So I'm just gonna tell you anyway. Is if you don't know, just type in Microsoft, right? And then it's MSFT right here, right? Let me see, make sure you guys can see. Okay. MSFT. So that's the ticker that we need. Okay. So we're going to do MSFT. Okay. And then you press enter and, you know, nothing's happened. Okay. So what is this MST, MSFT object? So there's a first thing you can call MS, uh, MSFT.info, right? You can just press enter. This is really confusing. 
<clears throat> okay, so now it gives you this information like their zip code, their sector, their number of employees, their summary, blah, blah, all, all these stats. Basically, this data is actually, let me go to Microsoft here, and if you go to profiles, right, it's basically information from here, right? So all the information came through White Finance, nicely formatted for you and everything. And all these numbers, like you see these like revenue growth, operating margins, EBITDA, target, blah, 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 blah. All this comes from the statistics, statistics section, right? It has all this information, right? So now how, do you see how powerful it is? Because somebody did all the parsing. So what, what White Finance does is it actually does a, uh, I don't know if you guys know requests, Python requests. Basically, it just goes out, pretends that you're, it's a browser, and then goes out and basically scripts Yahoo Finance for you and does all this formatting for you, right? I mean, it's super awesome. This is why we're using Y Finance because, you know, if you use, like, the data providers, like, you know, I mean, yes, they have more extensive data. Yahoo Finance, okay, the only drawback to using Yahoo Finance is, like, for example, like, financials. Like, the data doesn't go back. Sorry, not, yeah, like, balance sheet and cash flow. Like, it doesn't go back more than, like, three years. Right? That's the only drawback is that Y Finance can only scrape whatever is on the browser. Okay, that's the only downside. So if you want nitty gritty details and you know you want it like super granular, broken down and cleansed and everything, I mean I guess if you're like a hedge fund or something, like you know, you're you're more like a serious sort of an investor, then yes, um, maybe you know, invest into data. Yeah, I, but I'm just telling you, data's not cheap, okay? Financial data is expensive like some companies pay like hundreds of thousands of hundreds of thousands of dollars a year right so for average investor like us this is more than enough so anyway let me move on so the next thing we're gonna do is okay that's the info right so let's take a look at this one field right called Microsoft that financials okay where am I I am lost I have so many tabs open MSFT dot financials if you press enter you'll notice that it's basically, if you come up to Yahoo Finance, it's basically this, right? You see this breakdown, you know, June 30 all the way to 21 to June 30, 2018, June 30, 20, you see, it matches exactly that, right? The problem um, with this thing is it's, it can't reference, like, you're not going to reference, like, R&D. Like, you can't, in, pen, in pen data frame, like, we want to analyze each and specific field, right? But you can't do that. So this is in the wrong order. So what we need, what you need to do is call transpose. So if you guys remember what transpose is, uh, yeah, transpose basically means, man, they didn't good examples. Yeah, transpose basically means, oh, here's a, here's a good one. Transpose basically means like you're taking the rows and the columns and then you flip them, right? So imagine you have like, like, like a rectangle, right? You just kind of like rotate at 90 degrees, right? And if you do that, uh, so the way you can do that, I, I don't remember if you guys remember, is put that, that T, right, that transpose. So if you do it this way, you'll notice this is the data format that we need because we want to know, for example, right, if, like for example, the net coming going up, okay, so let's let's see, if we, let's just see if that's happening. You can say that T of, I forgot the syntax, of, yes, net income, right now you can see these this series now right this panda data from see but what does this mean this means nothing let me chart it dot plot and and yes boom right now it shows you this pretty chart right now you can do this on pretty much every column right and the reason why now you understand why we had to do the transpose because if you didn't do transpose it makes no sense to like compare R and D to like S G and A. Like you can't you can't sort of make sense of it because it the, the trans it's in the rows and the columns that are kind of flipped. That's why we do transpose, okay? So we need to transpose pretty much everything, okay? Just so you know what this dot T syntax means. Alright, so let me let's move on. Uh so suppose you want to know what the columns are. Okay, and you can easily do that. Just do the same. This MSFT financials.t dot columns. And it tells you what the columns are. And as I mentioned before, these columns are basically these columns. Okay, that's it. 
like income statement, you know, this. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, is this included? I think so. Yeah. So here we go. So th these columns are basically now these transpose columns, okay? All right, so let's take a look at history. Like, if you're just interested in price, and I, I think I mentioned this in the previous episode, you shouldn't just look at price because if you make a financial decision based on price only, um, you will get wrecked. Wrecked. R E K T. Okay. I don't know if you guys know what that. I don't know if I mean all the guys who who know, uh, watching this, but wrecked just means you know you get screwed, right? So don't just look at the price. But if you were were to just look at the price, you can type in dot history, and then you can say period equals max. Okay, and if you do this, what it does is it basically gives you the OHLC data. If you guys know OHLC, OHLC, nope. OHLC basically means open is the day that um, the price data. And I'm just let me just go back here. Open is the data, it's the price of the stock and the opening and the close is obviously close and the low is the lowest and the high is the highest. Okay. You don't want to look at this because this data is just, you know, just price, right? It just doesn't really tell you anything. But if you're developing like algorithmic trading bot or something, um, which by the way is really, really difficult and I don't, you know, recommend you spend more than like one day of your life learning it because, I mean, it is super difficult, okay? Just letting you know, it's that's not like an easy game to play. I mean, there's probably like, I would say like maybe less than 500 people on earth who play it and actually do well. But the 99.9% .9 of people who, who try, they just fail miserably and they lose a ton of money. So don't do it, okay? Okay, so that's the that's that. Let's take a look at dividends, okay? Uh, the, the reason, uh, suppose Microsoft is a good dividend stock. It's not. If you actually go to Microsoft uh, and then you under summary, right? Yep. Under summary, you see that Microsoft pays $2.48 which sounds like a lot, but you know their stock is 230 bucks. So there, if you if you take two dollars forty eight cents and divide by 336.72, is 0.75. So that means their dividend is 70, you know, less than one percent. Like, is it a good dividend model? Good dividend stock? No, because here's the thing about dividend stocks, right? You have to know these things. Dividend. If you pay dividend, okay. Uh, let me let me see if there's a uh, there's no good charting. So if, if a company pays you dividend, right, that means you are by default paying tax. Okay, by default you're paying tax. If they retain the earnings, right, and then reinvest, okay, and say they, their return on investment, their return on investment capital is like twenty percent, thirty percent, isn't that better than getting? You know like measly one percent and also having to pay like 30 percent tax on that makes no sense right so your yield is like like nothing right whereas if you held the money in in the company and the company reinvested and then just kept growing the basically the appreciate capital appreciation i mean that is much better here's what i don't understand about people who are like dividend stock dividend stock dividend stock you are by default getting less return because you are paying tax so I don't understand why people always think like dividend, dividend, dividend. Okay, it makes sense if you invest into like oil or I don't know, like you know stocks. I mean, sorry, uh, real real estate investment trusts, where basically like you can't do anything else other than just you know do profit share, right? Because you know like if your apartment is full, what else can you do? You can't like you can't squeeze more people in there, right? And by 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 law, they have to give you profit share. But companies that are growing, uh, companies that are like their market share is growing, they're in a growing market or, you know, they have some kind of innovative product. It makes no sense to get dividend, right? Like if you guys watch Shark Tank, that guy, that bald guy, what's his name? Uh, Kevin something, right? Mr. Wonderful or something. This guy goes up to every startup and he's like, hey, give me a royalty deal. Basically, he wants dividend. But like, why, dude? Like if you kept the money in there, your your capital will grow like 20 30 percent why the hell would you want this like you know why would you want to take this dividend plus pay tax on it it makes no sense like why would you want to give all this profit to to the government it makes no sense like this is 
I mean, you people might disagree with my comment about this, but if your company is growing, getting dividend or just, just that's ridiculous. Okay, that's just stupidity in my opinion. You know. So anyway, I think this video is getting a little long. Um, sorry about the rant, but now you understand like where I'm getting with this. I'm going to keep the videos to what the YouTube suggests, which is like under 10 minutes. I think this went a little bit over. But anyway, um, if you liked it, make sure to thumb up, okay? Because um, make sure I'm <laughs> just, my thumb up is the way that you uh, basically pay for this course, so to speak, right? Um, and I want to share this with a lot of people because, you know, financial literacy, in my opinion, is like, it's it's still very low, right? I mean, people are so afraid of stocks. People are afraid of like, you know, these balance, like, you know, the basic stuff, like plus minus divide, like why are you afraid of it? So I want to share with the world, like, hey, this is not that bad. I used to be afraid of this for like most of my adult life too. I mean, it's only in the past like five, seven years that I actually started getting into it. And then once I started doing it, turns out, hey, it's not that bad. It's just plus minus divide subtract, that's it, okay? So make sure to thumb up and if you haven't subscribed, make sure to subscribe, all right? Okay, I'll see you in the next video. Make sure to leave comments as well. Thanks.